the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. But you remember the scripture that says, one plants, one waters, but God, God gives it. the increase? Yes, sir. Yes. yes so sir. does that increase the, the the realization of the disciple? That's, that's or the disciple. Or did that occur before? I that think that increase is the, it's the willingness to to receive. Yes, that, sir. That is the increase. But the I'll, belief. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking now I'm saying is that the the increase are the souls, right? Because Bishop, then we talk about the beginning of this, not the beginning of this talk, but the beginning of this, when we first started talking about this, what is the focus, right? What is the focus of the soul? What the soul are trying to get? He's trying to get an increase. He's trying Stores, to get an increase. Stores, Stores, all, yeah, we work conjunct, to be in conjunction with one another to, to bring about that increase, but of course it's still God that does it. He does, One he, plants. Right. I'll plant the like this afternoon. We're gonna go out and plant some seeds. Exactly. Exactly. Later on, somebody's gonna they're gonna meet somebody else that's gonna water those seeds. They probably won't be on the street. They might just be at the job. They might be in the supermarket or something. But they're gonna oh, put some water on this. Come on. Yep. And then at some point, God is going to cause that seed because of what He's doing to the ground. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come Hallelujah. on now. If I be said, God is the husband, man. Come on, so man. He's the one that's actually tilling this soil and turning this soil and fertilizing this soil until that seed take root yes sir and and, and and that's that's beautiful because we have a single task yes sir and and i thank god for a single task because it's simple uh we don't have to take that person through hell and high water uh -uh. But god will allow them to go through there to make that ground right yes sir so so it's like our part Thank you to the good guys part. We the we the good cop. Come on. In a sense. Unless the Lord gives you that task. You know, shit. You know, represent him with the hardcore, you know. Right. And, and that was the other point I wanted to make from way back. I noticed that as God is dealing with individuals in the in the in the description, you have a lot of situations where you have a Paul and a Barnabas. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And and I think sometimes that God gives us those specific roles. Like mine in this situation for this particular person might be the encourager. Come on now. In the other situation, out of the same love that's motivated to be encourager, I might be the one that's rebuking them. Okay. okay. You know what I'm saying? But it's all, all still toward the same end. But but it depends on how God has, has called you to interact with that person in that particular or that peculiar situation. Right. So we're not always gonna come across as as as, as, as Wooly Harris did. Because there were some folks that just called me a drunk. <laughs> said, you need to start drinking. <laughs> and there were different folks that said, you know, brother, nothing but handed me a bottle of uh, <laughs> the alcoholic water, you know, wine, you know what I'm saying? So I had I had encouragement from both of them to the But I believe in my heart that it was God that was touching their hearts to bring it to me in those, those, different, uh, those different forms, you know? Well, you know, well, listen now. But what you got to do is, one of the things I do is, I ask a simple question. I don't get, I don't get caught up in how people tell me stuff. Okay. But I get, well, I got one question I always ask. Is there any truth in what they say? Woo! But, but, but let me ask you this, just, just not the not <laughs> same thing, but just for the sake of everybody else, that was a growth process, wasn't it? I'm just asking, I'm assuming that was gross because uh, well, I mean, uh, I've got to that point, but initially it was like that for me. So. I, I was offended by what folks said. You ought, to learn, you ought to learn that off the bat because, see, you don't get to choose how God going to send truth to you. But I did. I mean, I didn't speak like that. I, you know, sometimes I just got pissed off. Like when the preacher was preaching from the pulpit, man, he used to make me mad enough to jump on him. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> I mean, he really did. I mean, <laughs> God is big enough. God is big enough to handle your anger. Uh -huh. He did. He did handle it because I worked. A, a real pastor is big enough to handle your anger. Yeah, mm. and he was. I mean, he was a good pastor, man. But at that point, it wasn't like I was looking at it. This, I thought this guy was just on me, man, for whatever reason. You know? what, what, what you don't may not realize is how much that was a factor in your deliverance. Well, 
Yeah, well, I got delivered. Yeah. I know that's true. Yeah. But, uh, it, it's usually the folks that make us mad is the one that really, in the end, help us the most. Come on now. That's, I guess that's that digging around that, 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 those areas. I guess like that tree that he was talking about in Luke. He, 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 he dug around it. So he was, he was pulling some stuff out of it. That's another element you need to consider in that it could be easily misunderstood. Now, I believe God has called me to proclaim this gospel, to teach this gospel. Uh-huh. My primary focus is to equip the body. Come on now. Who may not be called to the ministry because I believe everybody in the body is a soul. Yeah. 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 Everybody. Yeah. The body is the evangelical, is the evangelism team. That is right. You equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Philip is a deacon. He's yes. not an apostle. Come on. Stephen is a deacon. He's not an apostle. Come on. The people that were persecuted in Jerusalem and fled and went to these other places, they proclaimed the gospel. They did. Mm. Yeah. But that but people have to be equipped and discipled to rightly proclaim the gospel. Hmm. And to produce after their own kind. No boy, they're talking about some other uh, hey, can you sow a seed into my ministry? We're trying to we're trying to expand the kingdom of God. Can you give me five hundred? We got a five hundred dollar line, six hundred dollar line, eight hundred dollar line. What's <laughs> <laughs> wrong with you? They, they got a in the kingdom. What what about the line at the altar for for what is that? A dope a double portion? <laughs> How you get a double portion of the fullness? <laughs> you put a, you put a yeah, double portion. It was like Old Testament preaching. It was like Old Testament preaching. They, double that. They, 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 they <laughs> used that situation between Elijah and Elisha. And when Elisha asked for a double portion of the, the or nothing that was upon uh, of, of, of Elijah, but but that was still Old Testament. They had that to do with the presence of God. I mean, the church, the building of the church. Well, also just, I, I believe I believe that Elijah saw something genuine and authentic and realized it. Mm -hmm. What he saw was the spirit of God upon Elijah. Yeah. Uh -huh. now, these folks out here who talking their double portion stuff, you better be careful what you asking for. I know, right? <laughs> I ain't right. never asked for that. I ain't never asked. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, that. Now what I want is the spirit of God. Amen. Now, I had a pastor who I saw the Spirit of God was upon him. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, I, and I submitted myself to what God was doing in him and through him. Listen carefully. I submitted myself to what God was doing in him. Yeah. Come on, come Amen. On. And he invited me to participate in what God was doing in him and through him. Yeah, yeah. Come he on. understood very clearly that it was God. Come on now. Come on. That's the kind of leadership you want to submit yourself to. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The discipleship. And then, like I said, so, so, and one of the things got out of the fact is that don't try to limit yourself of who you're sowing the seed into. Exactly. You know, Broadcast it. There's the harvest. You know? Broadcast it. Broadcast it. He said, go preach to the world. That's and right. Then, then, then the other part is that discipleship. And then the main thing I got out of it is, is be made whole. Who are you? Who are you in Christ? You gotta have some discernment in your sowing now. When you when you realize you sow it on wayside soil, uh -huh. quit fighting. Uh huh. Then uh -huh. listen. Let go. Let go. Move on. Okay. Thank you. Hey. For the yes, sir. Move on. Wait, wait, oh, you wait. ain't you ain't got no plow. <laughs> Come on. Come on now. That's right. That's legit. That's, we don't. That's legit. We don't have a plow. That's legit. That's, that's, what, part. Saying. that's what I'm saying. That 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 one method was just throwing that seed out there. That's, not, that's it. <laughs> He, he ain't plowing that. <laughs> you see, I was trying to tell Brother Johnson, your pastor in the pulpit, God might be using him to plow what he was telling you. When he was beating you up, he might was trying to take that hat to plow out of his soul. Take his soul off. That was yeah. a God, you did the plow now. Exactly. I think, I think, I think that's what he I, mean, I, I, I think that he's, uh, well, of course, he works through us, right? So he's going to manifest himself through somebody. Right. That's why I was saying we had like the Pauls and the Barnabas of the world, you know. These guys are still there the Spirit of God. 
but they just approach you from a different perspective. Right. And to me, uh, 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 Pastor, uh, 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 I mean, uh, Willie Harris was a Barnabas. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, 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 the, and the pastor was the, uh, the, the Paul. Right. He was, a, he was a hard line on the script. He was like, really, and I read the Bible because I was trying to catch him in the fall. He was, well, he was, he inspired me in a lot of ways because mm -hmm. I was trying to disprove this guy. I was trying to undermine his credibility. So I was reading the whole Bible. His name was Sammy Smith. <laughs> I was trying to find a way to, to, to find him at fault. And I didn't find a fault of what Sammy said until after I had got converted. So when I got converted, I mean, when I say converted, maybe that wasn't the point of conversion, but after I was the new alcohol. And uh, that's when I found a flaw. And I had no desire at that point to really make a big point of it because he had been such a benefit to me in getting out from under the bunch of that liquor. Yeah. So it, 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 it's a lot of things that plays in our lives that bring us to that point. And I can't even say fruition because we're still growing. <laughs> but uh, but it, it, he uses almost everything that we, well, I'm going to say, I'm going to be bold enough to say he uses everything that we encounter in this life to bring us closer to him. Well, I read that because the whole purpose of the life of uh, a discipleship. Yeah, like man. When we get to the point where we, we know that we need him to be made whole. Yeah. If, if you're worried about, don't worry about whether you are, I don't care whether you're straight or whatever, be made whole. If I can get you to be whole, then I can get oh, you. That was the other question I wanted to ask now. Because I, and this is a real question. <laughs> Does he have us publish what wholeness look like? Well, that's, enough, that's a good point. Is that part of the preaching of the gospel? To say, like, you know, a good, uh, that's a good was, was, he was saying that, you know, the, the, the manifestation of the, of, the, of the homosexual lifestyle is not in accordance with, they, uh, I, I can't how, remember how you put it, but it was not in accordance with God's prescript or design. Natural design. Natural design. So do we share with the world God's natural design in our preaching? I, I don't want to, why? You know what I'm saying? The only question I have is for Bishop to answer, if he's going to answer, but the everything natural design is temporal, right? So what we're trying to get a person to recognize that my true identity is eternal because everything else will pass away, right? So I, so the value of the, the, the natural is, is lower value than the eternal. In other words, you're getting to the point where a person's mind is thinking that, look, this desire, this attraction, this, 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 this whatever you think is driving me is being important. Because I think even when, because I want to look at this homosexual, I look at like, like you as an alcoholic, when you were an alcoholic, the alcoholic was driving your attractiveness toward it. Where, where wholeness changes the focus of where I'm trying to get my source my peace, my 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 fulfillment is not through my flesh, but through the spirit. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Well once they become spiritual, that makes sense to them. There yeah. was something I was trying I was trying to quote create maybe on a natural level. Is Bishop saying something? Yeah, give it a sense. Son. But your question is what Jesus actually lived and taught is the picture of homeless. Uh-huh. Now he didn't get he didn't get married, but he he told you that was God ordained marriage. Uh huh. Well, you can't have a kingdom without marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the offspring. Well, you can't have well you can't well you can't have no legitimate offspring without marriage. Yeah. Uh -huh. So God ordained marriage as the means of bringing more people into the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the raw material for the kingdom. Mm. Uh, okay. So now when we look at that like the lifestyle, the lifestyle practice in a lifestyle even if, 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 if uh, encouraged a, a donor does not produce an offspring. Homosexuals cannot have children if they pra by, by practicing homosexuality. It doesn't it doesn't work. But isn't that so really that in itself, if, if it was if it was if it was embraced exclusively, 
it would bring about extinction of, of, of the human race. Yeah, but but let me can I can I put a piece in there though is that that also applies with alcoholics, right? Yes, sir. That's that's the point I was about to make too. No, I that's no, that no problem with alcoholics. Well, I can put alcoholics can, alcoholic can still bring people into the world. But they can't. Well, yeah, they can. But what would happen? My kids would be a lot more warped than they are because I couldn't buy pamphlets and the amount of alcohol I was doing at the same time. So what I'm seeing is that sin itself degradates the human condition across the board. But, yeah. but, listen, but listen, don't get caught up in that because you're going to be born a sinner one way or the other. You right. See? If your and parents are alcoholic, you're still a sinner. To right. be, to if be your born. parents are crack addict, you're still a sinner. Still a sinner. If yeah. your, your parents are filled with the Holy Ghost, you're still a sinner. Right. Yeah, yeah. That does not abdicate God's requirement to be fruitful and multiply. Right. And, and, and you can't now, be. One, one last thing. This is what Paul told, this is what Paul said to, I think it was Timothy. He said, uh, it might have been Peter that said, if they continue in childbearing. Uh -huh. Yeah, they should be saved. Yeah. Whoa, look out now. Yeah. What's you, what you gonna tell, the, what you gonna tell the, the, the gay man? Can't bear children, man. He's not can't spreading the seed. But, but I guess the fact is that to let them know the uniqueness of your condition is not so more important than the, the fact of being whole. That's what I'm trying to say, Bishop. The yeah. wholeness is what we want. Because yeah, wholeness, wholeness is the goal. Yeah. That's the goal. If you if you connect to Christ, then you know who you Because I think we got an identity crisis, right? Well, yeah. well I guess we got a, yeah, we do. <laughs> we got an identity crisis. Who am I? Yeah. So now we get so, listen, so you got people buying jewelry, having makeup, having makeover, and all of that said to them, okay, so you don't believe what God created is very good. Come on. Well, so you know, wait a minute, hold up a second. I'm going to say they have not experienced anything in a lot of situations that says what God has created is good. Yeah. There have been people that have experienced abuse, abuse from their childhood, their memorable childhood, up to wherever you encounter them at. Yeah. Like I was saying before, the yeah, woman that yeah, we talking about, God is a loving father. That girl I'm has been raised by her father. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm talking about trust folk doing this. Yes, sir, they do. As a matter of fact, you know, trust folk have a makeover. Yeah. Yeah. Trust folks have a, you know, uh, nips and tucks and perks and trying to get things to look good on the outside, trust folk. Yeah, yeah, and that is true. because they've never been taught. Taught, never been taught. And, and, and had their mind renewed that whatever God did, though, it's good. It's good. That's why, that's why when people make jokes about my small frame, I ain't offended. Amen. I like, look, I eat anything I want, much as I want. And hey, hey. Hard, I just grab hold of something. Which I can't. <laughs> I can't. Right? Well, I'm, I'm glad about what God did with me. Amen. I don't want to say nothing. Matter of fact, I'm even, I'm even, you even find that some of the people that are more uh, healthy are starting to find out that, oh, I, I need to embrace who I am, right? They, they're no longer saying they're bad or bad looking. They start to, they're embracing their, who they are. God made them that way far physically. Uh, but <laughs> I, I still think the piece is, though, is that, regardless of the self right this that's about we coming into wholeness and denying self that old self that old man and now i'm whole in him who i am in him is more important than who i am in the world in the kind and, of thing, which you are no longer know. part of which you should huh? be no longer part of huh which you should be no longer part of and, and, and that was the thing he was showing the other day was that this is a progressive move. We can't, we're not going back to our norm. Our norm was death. Yeah. When we were carnal, we were dead. If we try to go back to being carnal, it says he who sold to the flesh of the flesh be corruption. So to be carnal minded is death. Yes, so if we try to go back to where we were and try to be a better version of that, we're just dead. Right. We, what so we're dead. doing is moving forward spiritually. Yeah. In our spiritual growth. And then one thing I was talking, you talking about the way that you look, or the way I, I God knows the way I look. <laughs> we, we want to be smaller, right? We want to be, we want to be, you know, whatever that frame is. But that, just like with the relationship that we have with the Father, 
will be determined by the relationship that we have with the Father. Yes, sir. I, if we are fasting and praying, in accordance with what did Jesus say, my meat is to do my Father's will. That's yes. a change in, 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 in behavior. Exactly. And it, when we embrace that, the manifestation of it is going to be overt. You know, it's, and I start to get convicted by this. It's hard to say that you're fasting when you it really, really huge. <laughs> like you, you ate three chickens at dinner. So it's like, at some point, I know if I fast, there's going to be a physical manifestation of that. Exactly. And if I'm fasting under the leading of the Holy Spirit, that's going to be spiritual growth. Right. I'm going to, and, and he tells us in certain places, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. This kind goes out only by prayer and fasting. And fasting. Yeah. So it's like, if the enemy knows what my weakness is, uh -huh. why would he send it against me if he knows that I can't counter it? Exactly. And if I'm not fasting and I'm not praying, that means Satan still has a stronghold, or he has a yeah, he has place in my in my life, in my spiritual walk. He even has place because I'm not able to accomplish that. If I'm not aspiring toward that, that means I'm never going to get better at it. No. Right. Whereas God unveiled these different things to us in, the, in our spiritual lives, we had to begin to work on those or ask Him to help us in those areas. Exactly. And I've literally had to pray for a fast. Come on. And, it, and it's not something I can just do on my own, man. I mean, I, I, it take, I thought I could. Yeah. And then I broke the fast and couldn't go back on it for months and months and months and months. And I've been praying for a fast again. Come on. And I find out when the Holy Ghost is needed, it, it ain't nearly as hard. Yeah. It's almost like you don't get hungry, but right. but it's, it's it's still a place of humility, you know. It lets yeah. you know you ain't about nothing. Everything that happens that good is gonna be through him anyway. Yes, sir. So, but we, and I mean, I'm, I'm having a preaching on speed of doing this. I did this yesterday. I had to preach yesterday. Now I was on the street and I was trying to tell them the 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 the, 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 the I'm, trying, I'm trying to tell. I'm trying to receive a message devoid of my you know, influence and really preach what it is that the Lord would have us to preach to the people in the streets. So this message, what we're doing right now is about for it being a whole is concerned. Yeah. Identifying those areas that need to be published. Yeah. And avoiding those areas uh, of unnecessary, unnecessary contention. Uh-huh. So, because a man offended this is very difficult to win. Now, if a person is embracing something, even if it's an error, there's still a way that it can be addressed that won't distance that person. Come on. You see what I'm saying? Yes, so when we're putting that word out there, you said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw him. Then, then, then that's what he's going to do, right? If he evangelizes and up, teach the people. Right. So even in discipleship, we got to teach people to be drawn to lift, draw up him. It's all about him. And then, it's, all, then it's that new identity. Because I like that um, one scripture here, it says that this we kept saying peculiar. This this uh, that 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 reminds me of second first Peter 2 10 or 2 9. But you are a chosen generation. In other words, you become oh, your your new identity of who you are. See, people kill themselves to try to protect an image. We need to go ahead and embrace the image of who he is, right? He said, we're a royal priesthood. Hey, brother Addison, we're a holy nation. Yeah. We're people. Look at that. There's that peculiar he's talking about. Uh, peculiar people. That you should mm -hmm. show up the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Discipleship, isn't it? To, to show that new identity. I, I was in darkness. So they, you know, when somebody look at you, right, brother Anthony? Yeah, you're right. If if you don't be confused, yes, I was called out of darkness. I, I I'm not gonna deny where I was. So come on now. You know what I'm, I, I don't, I'm not denying what I was. <laughs> hey, I was called. And I came. Come on, bro. Some people are called and don't move toward that call. But then they're not. Then they're not. Like, you right. Know, you know when 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 you outside playing and your mama used to say, "Call your name." 
Come on, you know all she want is a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> you still <laughs> go though. And so you you don't immediately come because <laughs> you like I ain't going. I'm act like I don't hear. <laughs> they should lose that thirst, right? <laughs> but I like the fact is that this this thing kind of paint a new identity. Yeah. You know, I used to. Go ahead. I used to uh, think about like what the elder was saying, uh, how you know fasting would help and and, and eating right and, and you know my physical appearance, you know uh, how it would uh, affect me and and it was a big part of my life, you know, uh, physical exercise, lifting weights, you know, being able to to be uh, what the world calls fit, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, and, and and have that image that the world was seeking. Uh -huh. And I ran across the scripture that said, uh, bodily exercise, exercise profit yeah. little. Profits little. little. Yep. But yeah. uh, godliness is, is profitable in all things. Amen, man, amen. And that freed me from that and, and it made me think about I, I looked at myself and said how silly do I look come on just lifting weights for nothing <laughs> it's not there's no there's no purpose but for my physique you know, <laughs> you know I'm lifting more and more and more and more just to put it back down <laughs> not to achieve anything that's profitable to my to to, to my family <laughs> or or someone else you know other than just than, interest he said a little just lust lust of the flesh you know right. to make yeah. myself appeal to other people <laughs> and, and and i was lusting after my own flesh uh -huh. by trying to make it bigger and stronger you know and 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 look a certain way so that scripture freed me up from a whole lot of things. But now, also I took away that in my walking or exercising, listening to scriptures is like, I get a little bit of profit from, from the exercise yes, and that. a whole lot of profit from the work. That's right, man. It is true. You, you know, as we look at it, even the natural occurrences as we, as we go through this life, the worst is that you would say to this mom, "Do not remove the cast until you don't see." I thought to myself, I would never lift enough weight to be able to move a mountain, literally. Yeah. And Jesus Christ of Nazareth, when he spoke that scripture, he was literally talking about a real mountain. <laughs> he said, "If you don't have doubt in your heart, yeah. you'll be able to move mountains." So he's talking about spiritual growth, and spiritual growth does not come through lifting weights like that. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It yeah. doesn't come through the, the bodily uh, uh, acquisition of more muscle mass. Right. Muscle mass does not empower us to lift literal mountains or to stop it from raining or to stop the you know stop the winds and the waves. Mm -hmm. But in Him, we have that ability. But we have to exercise ourselves in Him, even yeah. as we exercise ourselves in the flesh. Exactly. Yeah. We exactly. became stronger in our flesh. We literally did. But to what end? Come on. But how much more stronger will we be if we exercise ourselves in the spirit? In the spirit. Yeah. These signs shall follow them that believe. You know, I never put on no muscle mass to punch the demon out. Uh -huh. I might have punched the person out that the demon was in, but I couldn't punch the demon out. But by word, you had the power to cast the devil well, out. It, it, and, it's, and it's still not us punching it out. It's, you know, it's, it's the spirit that's working us through us. Submitting to the spirit yeah. and the spirit punching it out. Yeah. So that that is the thing. The power is in the dying to self. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and that's what it's saying back to the even with the flesh thing. There's in John 26, 26, when Je you know they came following Jesus, right? They're looking for him, right? After he fed them. <laughs> and he said in verse 26, Jesus answered the Saturday, them, verily, verily, I say to you, you you seek me. Not, not, not because you saw the miracles. <laughs> you didn't come because of my words. You want some food, man. <laughs> Y'all want to eat. <laughs> but you, but you, you did eat. 
the loaves and were filled. Huh? <laughs> they did for cardinal reasons.